Robin Hood's trailing stop order, which can really make a difference in your trading, guys. And I don't think I've ever talked about this, but I know a lot of people have been asking about it. So here it goes. Let's get right into this video. So a trailing stop order is going to be an order type that lets you track the best price of a stock before triggering a market order. Now, here's the thing. It can be used in two different scenarios. It can be used when you're looking to buy a stock, as well as it can be used when you're looking to sell a stock. And so I'm going to show you guys how it works in both scenarios, but I'm going to start with selling a stock because I, I think this is going to be the most common scenario that you're going to want to use the trailing stop order with. OK, so I'm going to go and I'm going to use SoFi here. The reason I'm using SoFi is because I actually have shares of this stock. So it's kind of a more realistic example here. And again, we're going to start by, by looking at how it looks like when you're looking to sell the stock. OK, so let's go over to sell here, sell SoFi. And again, it's going to be a order type. So to look at the different order types on Robinhood, remember, there's this drop down here that you can click on. And this shows you all the available order types. And again, today we're focusing on the trailing stop order, which is going to be the last option on this list here. So let's go ahead and click that right there. So let's take a look here at how this is going to work now. As you can see, order type has been updated to trailing stop order. Next, we have trail type, and there's actually two trail types. There's percentage, and there's also amount. So we're going to go over both of these, but let's just first start with percentage, okay? Now, let's take a look here. Next, we have trail percentage. So here is where you want to go ahead and enter a percentage and I'm going to explain how this percentage works. So I'm just going to go ahead and use 10. Okay. 10%. Next you have shares. Basically this is how many shares you would want to sell. Uh, so it says it's a, there's 120 shares available. I actually only have 20 shares to sell because the other 100 shares are tied up in a covered call. So, uh, I can only do up to 20 here. So I'll just do the full 20 here. And then next we have expires. So you have good for day or you have good till canceled. Uh, so good for the day is it'll expire today at market close. Good till canceled doesn't expire until 90 days. It looks like so I'll just leave it as good for day. And then after this, you also have something that says initial stop price. Now notice that you can't actually input anything in here. The reason being that this gets automatically calculated here for you. Okay. So this initial stop price is going to be dependent based on the percentage you used. And of course, what the current share price of the stock is. So basically this number is showing you what 10%, which is the percentage we used here, 10% less than the current share price would be. So if we take a look here, let's go over to the calculator. If we do 10 or 10% 10 less than the current share price, which would be 90. And then the current share price is about 732. So we multiply this by 732. What do we get? We get 658, right? Which is exactly what this initial stop price is showing us. So that's how that's calculated here. So of course, if I, you know, increase this, it's going to get lower. If I decrease it and just do one, it's going to go higher because again, ultimately this shows you, uh, you know, the percentage wise less than the current share price. Okay. But again, I'm going to go back and I'm going to use 10% here. So let's go ahead and talk about how this is actually going to work then. So one of two things is going to happen here. Either after I go ahead and place this order here, so far, the share price will continue to drop. And ultimately, if it continues to drop, it's eventually going to hit my stop price. Now, keep in mind that if I enter this order and the share price keeps dropping, the initial stop price is not going to change. So if I enter this right now, so if I just keeps going down and down and down, my initial stop price is not going to change. Eventually, it would hit the initial stop price, 
once it hits the initial stop price, this is going to be converted into a sell market order. So a sell market order will be triggered, meaning that it's gonna sell the shares that you put in here at the best price possible, okay? And so it's not always gonna be the stop price you put. It might be a little bit more, it might be a little bit less, right? But it's gonna basically sell the shares at the best available price. Now, the other scenario that happens, and this is why this can be very useful, is that after I place this order, SoFi, the share price, starts to go back up. And so this is what's gonna happen in that scenario. If the share price starts to go up, the stop price, my initial, my stop price, right, for this entire order is actually going to go up with it so that it's always 10% away from the current share price or whatever percentage it is that you're using. So, for example, let's say SoFi all of a sudden skyrockets to $100. Now that's a very extreme case, but just so that you guys can get a better understanding. Let's say SoFi all of a sudden skyrockets to $100. My stop price then for this order is also going to move up with it so that it's still only 10% away from the price. So that means, right, that if SoFi goes to $100, my stop price still, still needs to be 10% away from it, meaning that the new stop price would be updated to $90. And so if SoFi spikes to $100 and then it falls back down to like $20, well, my stop price would go up to 90 when it goes up to 100. And then as it starts to go down, my stop price isn't going to change. And eventually if it hit 90, it would sell at 90 which again can be very useful because if you're using a regular stop loss order, right? And SoFi goes up to 100 and you put your stop price at 660 and then SoFi drops back down to $20, the stop price is still gonna be 660, right? And you would have missed out on a ton of potential gains there. So ultimately this is very useful if a stock continues to go up higher and you don't have time to monitor your trade or to you know reset your stop loss, this will follow the stock up, okay? And so the other thing, of course, that I mentioned is that instead of using a percentage amount, right, where you go to trail type, you can also use a dollar amount instead. So let's say instead I do like $1 now, instead of a percentage, I use $1. So it's gonna be the same exact concept, right? If SoFi, if I, if I enter this trade and SoFi starts to go down in price, my stop price isn't going to move, okay? But let's say I enter this order and SoFi spikes up immediately to $100. Then my stop price will follow it and it will have to be $1 away from it. So if SoFi goes to $100, my stop price will go up to $99. And then if it starts to go down, my stop price will stay at 99. And eventually if it hits 99, it'll convert it into a sell market order, sell my shares at the best available price. So you can see that it's very helpful. So basically, if the stock continues to go higher, the stock price goes up with it. But eventually, if it starts to go down from the previous high, the stock price doesn't change. It stays wherever it's at, okay? So very, very useful here. Uh, and again, I think it's gonna be more common when you're selling a stock than when it is to when you're buying a stock. So now I'm gonna go over and talk about how this concept works when you're buying a stock because it is a little bit different, okay? Let's go ahead and let's talk about how this would work if you're looking to buy a stock and using a trailing stop order. So let's we'll, we'll switch over to buy now, and let's go ahead and let's go back to percentage, okay? So same thing, but now we're focusing on buying the stock rather than selling it. So order type, still trailing stop order. Let's again start with percentage here. And then let's just leave this as 10% like we had it before. 20, uh, let's say, you know, let's say we're looking to buy like 50 shares or something. And then again, expires, you can choose whichever one you want. I'm just gonna leave mine as good for day. So now let's take a look here. So the stop price when you're buying, you're looking to buy the stock is actually gonna be set above 
the current share price. Okay, and so take a look here. The current share price of SoFi is 733. What's our stop price? It's 806. So it's actually higher than the current share price. Now, when would you want to do this? You're going to want to do this when you believe that a stock, that if a stock goes up a defined amount, it may go up even higher. So think of like short squeezes, right? Usually in a short squeeze and we, you know, like think of like AMC and GameStop, right? Back when they were going up insane amounts, right? If, if a stock potentially goes up, you know, 10, 20%, you know, there might be a potential for it to go up another 10, 20, 100, 200, 300 percent, right? So that's when you would want to do this. Again, this is going to be, I think, a lot less common than when you're looking to sell a stock, uh, but people still use this here, okay? And so, again, here you can use percentage or dollar amount. We're going to start with percentage here. And so let me try to explain how this scenario would work now. So basically, what's going to happen here is again one of two things right so either the the price of this stock starts to go up and so let's say i enter this order right now and sofi starts to go up my stop price isn't going to change if this stock starts to go up it would stay at around eight dollars okay eventually as it goes higher and higher it would eventually reach my stop price once it hits the stop price this would be converted into a buy market order. And so it would buy 50 shares at the best available price. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, it's right around $8. And then you would have 50 shares, right? And hopefully it continues to go up higher, especially again, if you're trying to like, you know, find short squeezes or whatever. Now, the other scenario that's going to happen, and this is where your stop price would change, is if I, if I go ahead and I place this order, and so if I continues to go down, well, if it continues to go down, this the stop price is also going to move down with it. So again, these two numbers are 10% away from each other, right? So let's say so if I all of a sudden drops to like $6, the stop price will have to drop as well so that it's 10% away from the current share price. So that means if so if I drops to $6, my stop price needs to be 10% higher. And so that means my new stop price would switch to 660 after that, right? So if SoFi drops to $6 now and I have entered this order, my stop price will move down to 660. And then let's say SoFi starts to go back up, my stop price isn't going to move. Eventually it would hit 660. And then at 660, again, it would trigger a buy market order and it would buy you know, 50 shares or whatever you, you put in here, okay? Now, let's say you didn't want to use percentage. You want to use dollar amount. Again, you can do that for this scenario here as well. So let's say, again, we want to use $1 here, right? So again, the stop price and the market price will be $1 away from each other. And so again, if SoFi starts to go up here, my stop price isn't going to change. It's going to stay the same. However, if so, if I again starts to go down, then my stop price is going to go down with it. So again, that it's always $1 away. So if so, if I drops to $6, my stop price is going to drop to $7, right? Because it has to be $1 away when this goes down. But then let's say once it hits $6, once the share price of so, if I hit $6, it starts to go back up. The stop price is going to remain the same. And eventually, once it hits seven dollars, it would go ahead and trigger a buy market order. Okay, and again, it would be at the best available price. It's not always going to be at whatever the stop price is. But anyways, uh, again, very very useful way to kind of trade, especially again if you know you don't you don't have time to monitor your trades all day. You're very busy. Uh, you're on the you know maybe driving all day, or you just don't have access to look at the you know your portfolio all day. This is a better way to set up these uh, stop prices, right? And, uh, you know, not having to monitor this all, all day. So anyways, if you guys have any questions about anything I just talked about, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Check out the Discord, link to it in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys next time.